Hey YouTube, welcome to part 4 of the log splitter build. In this episode I'm going to start putting the frame of the log splitter together for the trailer part of it. And I hope to finish that in the next episode, so let's get on and have a look at it. Now I've got all the parts cut for assembling the trailer part. The main shaft of the trailer is outside, but I've got the board cross member here. That's part 015. Got the cross member assembly which we've already made, A02. I've got the engine mounts left and right and the oil tank supports. Now they're all exactly the same until I drill them, then we get a left and right engine mount out of that. This is the centre of the hinge section and these are the hinge sides. Now I'm a hobbyist, I know I drew the plans but I'm going to deviate a little bit from them in order to use up material that I already have on hand. The plans call for 6 mil, 7, 6 mil by 75 for the centre hinge. I've got 75 by 5 mil, so it's only 1 mil shy and it lets me use up a piece. I'm pretty sure that that'll work. Again, for the hinge sides, I've got two of these, part 020. I haven't drilled them yet, but I have cut them. Again, these aren't quite spec as per the plans. The plans call for 6 mil by 125 for these and I have 6 mil by 127. Also, these were something that I welded together from two pieces for another job which I ended up not using them for, so I'm going to use them for this job. There's only two mil difference, but I'll just have to bear that in mind when I go ahead and put the holes in and mount them, because I'm trying to mount the centre of gravity just a little bit ahead of the wheels, so that it makes it all easier to pick up and move around. There's these various bits and pieces, I think I mentioned them earlier in another video. They're not on the plans, but I've just cut pieces so that I can put caps over the ends of the RHS and SHS. Just because it makes it look neater in my opinion, not needed for the quality of the design or anything. That's why they're not in the plans, but I just think it makes it look more professional and finished if you cap the ends. So I bought the main bar of the trailer in to start welding it up. And I'd just like to point out, this is the bottom. I've got this 45 degree angle in here, and that's mainly so I can mount the sort of door bar I want on it, because I am be dragging this around behind a compact tractor or the Rigon mower. I imagine most people will be dragging it around behind something rather small. In a small tractor or garden mower, if anyone builds it, I imagine I'll be dragging it around behind something like that. So you probably want much the same sort of pitch as I'm going to make, but if not, just cut this however you need to, to make the hitch that works for you. But all right, I'll just get some of this stuff set up and then I'll explain it. Now I've got this axle piece in place, measured up and squared up with the main axis of the trailer. I did use a big square that I've got to line it up, but you could also just measure your diagonals from the centre of the trailer. And on both of those I have exactly 445 millimetres on mine. I'm going to put a tack on him just to hold him in place and then I will double check him. I can take this one off because I've got to line him up a little bit better. For this job, I'm going to use some 6013 rods. I think I'll use the thinner 2.5 mil on this and do some multi-pass on it. Just keep the amperage down so I don't accidentally burn through. There's a little bit of a worry on the thinner metal. The 2.5 mil 332nds rods, we can run between 50 and 90 amps. Well, I'm going to run about 80, see how we go for a start. As I say, I'm just going to be tacking it up to start with, but I will need a welding helmet. And it helps when the welder's turned on as well. Just take this all and get it out the road so I can measure up properly. Shouldn't need that anymore, unless I've got to cut these tacks. We measure from the bottom here to this corner, we have 1522, 1523, which is a 16th under foot. And there we have a 32nd under 5 foot. 364th under 5 foot. A quarter of a mil over 23 and a quarter. 
For a quarter of a millimeter, that should be fine. There'll be probably that much wobble in the wheels. So I can go ahead and weld that all the way across, all the way around, get him firmly fixed on, and then carry on with putting the rest of it together. Another five amps on that, I think. Uh, 85 amps. That should certainly hold that, although when I turn him over, I'm going to put some wheels along on this other corners up here on the top side, but that'll hold the bottom well and truly. I may have done that in one pass with the 3.2 mil 1 8 rods, but that kept me honest and no burn through. The zinc on the inside's gone zinc oxide a bit, but other than that, looks really good. And of course, going turning to zinc oxide from the heat's to be expected. Now here's a little trick you may not have seen. I'm going to use a stepper drill to drill the angles for the engine mount. And in order to know how far down I've got to go, I just mark the ring above it with a marking pen. I can see that when it's spinning and then I just go down to there and I know I'm down far enough. And a little bit of acetone cleans that off good as new. I will do that drilling off camera, because you know, drilling's drilling. Quicker to do it off camera for four holes and to move the camera over to the drill stand. And well, there's the drill set up, ready to go. You can see the black mark there, and just show you how this works. Speed to go through it, good question. Never real sure with these stepper drills. A bit awkward, so I sort of tend to go a little bit below the size of the finished hole and pick a speed that's suitable for a twist drill around that. So somewhere around the 600 mark looks good, say 560 is near enough. And we'll see how we go with that. And that's it, we're down to that last hole. That's all there is to it. Just repeat that three more times and we have an engine mount drilled. And there you go, just in case anyone was wondering, I got a little bit of acetone, cleaned that up, looks as good as new, ready to be all marked up again for the next hole. I'm setting up to weld the engine mount on this side. I've squared him up this way, I've got this bit of scrap metal clamped on to line him up flush with the top. I've got him square against the cross member this way. So I'm just going to put a weld across down here and I might roll him and put one up there. This will get welded when I weld the cap over the end of this and then I'll probably put a weld along the top of him as well after I take this off. As keen as I am to use up little bits of welding rod, I think that's probably not even worth trying to start with. But I will need to turn the welder on, which I continually forget. Oh, there's tacks on there. I'll take this support piece off because I think if I don't, I'm going to end up welding him there, which I already have. Hit him a little bit with a tack. This depends. Uh, hit him pretty soldy with a tack, I think. Oh, no. Oh, he's all right. He's only just, just touched him. Oh, should be good to get a weld on that, I hope. Bring him down to place to the bottom of the range on this one. All right, got him. Did start with way too much amps on that, though. I've got a bad feeling about this. I think he's moved. Bloody hell, he has to a long way. Okay, cut him off and try again. Now, I've chosen to put the oil tank mount on this other side on next. Hopefully, it's going to let me mount things or line things up a bit easier to have these two done, outside ones done first. I'll take some of this off now. Let's see what we're left with. Mmm, I pulled about a millimetre. Hmm, that's all there was enough given that to let me move it a millimetre. I don't know whether that's a good or a bad thing. Right, I'm going to roll him over and weld him from the top this time. I think that was a lot easier. Short welds let me hold my breath while I'm doing it. Oh, pulled again. Oh, I pulled a millimetre. I might have to live with that. I'm not going to cut him off just for a millimetre. I will. Let's run another little bead along a piece of it. Oh, 
All right, rolling back over on his back again. All right, I gotta go find some scraps that I can use to clamp this together now before I weld it. Put the front cross member in. I've tacked him on the two corners on each of the mounts, the oil mount and the engine mount on the outside. I'm going to put some welds along this top side in here and then I'll flip him over and weld along the inside as well. I did square him all up. He's within a millimetre of being square, which, you know, quarter it is, it'll be good enough. Put the other oil mount on next, on this side, and then I'm going to have to see about getting him stable enough to sit the engine on so I can make sure I get the engine mount put in the right spot. Well, there is a little bit of leeway. They've got a slidey bit in those holes. I might be able to do it without, because it's going to be real hard to uh, get the engine sitting up there in a stable manner. I don't want it falling off. Now the gap we need in here is 140.5 millimetres. I'm going to have to mark on there because it looks as though I'm going to have to hold the thing in place or attack it. Keep forgetting welders need electricity. Now, I'll do the engine mount on the other side. Same deal. I'll just do him off camera though. I thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope to get the trailer part of the frame finished in the next episode. If you'd like to see more of my projects, you can go to my channel or browse to my website. Don't forget to click like, comment and subscribe for more. Until next time.